Great Sword is a weapon that monsters don't take lightly. One wrong move on their part, or just a bit of hesitation, and they know they'll be reeling from a charge slash that brings them to the ground in an instant. It almost makes you feel like you're the boss, and the monster is just another player coming to get wrecked. Let me tell you why I love the Great Sword. So, as far as the build goes, as is with every video, this is just more for transparency's sake and not meta building, so if you're looking specifically for that, you might want to find a meta build video. Between PC and console, I bounced around between a few builds. The one that I liked the most was this one I used on console, using the Bracky and Furious pieces, which those of you on PC will be able to use very soon. I'm always a fan of having recovery up in my build, if I can swing it, especially if I'm using a weapon that I feel like I haven't mastered just yet. We of course have focus maxed out, and I know I might get some flack for not using the Damascus chest, but I wanted to get that maximum might secret for that instant activation and 40% affinity. I figured with Great Sword, by the time you get through your stages of the TCS combo, your stamina is going to be well beyond capped off, and you'll be supercharged with affinity. We of course have the staples weakness exploit, crit boost, and health boost. Attack boost level 4 for that 5% affinity. Agitator would be maxed out, but again I don't have the charm maxed out at the moment, and I wanted to throw in a maxed out quick sheath to give me some more mobility. But if you've been a good boy or girl, and actually took care of your charms, then you can have the best of both worlds. The damage was good, mobility was good, and I felt really comfortable with that extra bit of healing. The shoulder charge is one of the more interesting moves in Monster Hunter because this isn't some kind of special swing with your sword. This isn't some kind of special ricochet shot with your bow or bow gun. This is you taking your shoulder, your strength, your momentum, and slamming into the monster with everything you've got. To be honest, I get that same kind of awesome feeling as I do when I land a solid slam on a monster's head coming down from the sky with a sword and shield. But this isn't just an obviously badass looking attack. There's plenty of benefits to using it. The very first benefit is the fact that it does KO damage. A very well placed and timed tackle can send a monster reeling, or if you're lucky, it will lay the monster flat on its side, giving you time to let off that true charge slash. A little thing that some people might not know is that your tackle actually scales with the amount of charge that you're currently at in your slash. Another great benefit to using this is that you can skip a step in your TCS combo when you use your tackle. We all know that the Great Sword is a Hulk in the damage category, but we also know that getting through the entire TCS combo can be a bit of a time consuming act. Having an opportunity to skip a step in this entirely is a game changer, especially since we can do this tackle off of a roll. A wise hunter can greatly use this to their advantage with the proper positioning of that roll. The last benefit I'll be talking about is the way it extends the combo, even in the most perilous of situations. Think of that barbarian in your party and just how secretly jealous you are inside when they simply rage and then take reduced damage from the blunt of the attacks that they take. When you tackle through a monster's attack, you can extend your combo without having to worry about knockback. If you want to see some impressive play, someone who knows exactly how to utilize the tackle move is definitely fun to watch. I still remember watching people tackle through Teostra Novas and Nergagante Slams, thinking how awesome it looked. Of course, I'm not advocating for reckless uses of the tackle move, but man, when you use it properly, it really does give you that feeling of brute strength. A huge draw for me personally, and even trying the Great Sword out for the first time, was the fact that they looked absolutely phenomenal. To be honest, even the bone and iron weapons don't look bad in comparison to the models for other weapons. Don't get me wrong, I know that Capcom sadly botched a few of the Great Sword models that people were really looking forward to, like the Acid Shredder. Which, if you're on PC, there's a couple fantastic mods by Uber Grainy and Blue Hydras for the Acid Shredder that brings it to life in a great way. Both will be linked in the description below. I've also featured quite a few in my mod showcases, so check those out for some more sweet looking greatswords. But outside of modding, I really think the greatsword got some of the best treatment for the way their weapons look. I mean, the concept of a ridiculously huge sword is something I'm sold on from the get-go. Not only are you able to tackle through monsters' attacks when you want to, but you can always put that insanely large greatsword of yours into even further use. This thing isn't a one-trick pony. It doesn't just slice monster tails with ease. When your back is against the wall, and you have absolutely no other option, 
you can prop that great sword up and turn it into a shield. Let me be clear about this, and I can't stress it enough. This is very much a last resort. Guarding with the great sword is definitely not one of its strengths, but having the option to do so, period, is absolutely worthwhile and valuable to have. I did read a forum before where the person was saying that they don't see enough great sword users using guard, and it made me cringe a little bit just reading that. The chip damage, sharpness loss, and everything else just isn't worth it. So if you haven't gotten the point yet, let me reiterate that this is only a last resort option, but it's still awesome to have that option at all. Alright, so we don't have to play around like the biggest draw to the greatsword isn't the insane damage numbers that pop up when you finish your TCS combo. To be honest, the damage you do with any of the slashes charged up isn't too shabby. Obviously your goal is to get from point A to point TCS as fast as possible, but if you know you aren't going to be able to make it to that final step of the combo, charging to the end of the step you're in still does impressive damage. Just flutter through the first two swings and then bring the pain with that final charge swing. Remember that tackle we talked about? You can eliminate the need for one of those swings entirely with it, bringing you closer to that four digit damage and the absolute havoc you can wreck with the greatsword. But don't think that this is the only worthwhile move in the greatsword's moveset. You have a jumping wide swinging slash that can do a solid bit of damage and if I remember correctly is pretty good at applying status as well. You can use it to better position yourself as well. This isn't something that you're going to be using every second, but there definitely is some fun to be had with wake up builds that see you put the monster to sleep and wake them up with a nice TCS or wall slam, whatever you're in the mood for. You'll come to find out that the more you use the greatsword, the more you'll start to recognize that the TCS isn't the end all be all of the weapon. Is it an insane damage dealer? Absolutely. Can it be pretty tricky to pull off? For sure, especially with some of the more mobile and faster moving monsters. But when you complement the TCS combo with things like tackling and wide slashes, you really bring out the potential of not only the TCS combo, but the greatsword as a whole. While the TCS is the creme de la creme of the greatsword, that's not to say that there is only a singular way of playing it. There are other angles that you can take to try and bring out the most in this massive weapon. This is going to sound crazy, but I have absolutely seen some very viable elemental greatsword builds. Don't call me crazy because you can find it very easily on this here YouTube. I never really thought it would be a thing, but you finally have that option if that's something you've been hoping for. Speaking of those elemental builds, you toss Crit Draw and Valkana's four-piece set for some Frostcraft, like that fellow over there at Rage Gaming, for the cherry on top. And all of a sudden, you're not trying to get to the end of that TCS combo with every waking second that you wield the Burly Greatsword. Being able to take this route instead of just screaming for more raw damage helps to keep the gameplay fresh, because let's face it, for a long time the Greatsword felt really one-dimensional in the sense that you were solely working towards that TCS and you felt like you were playing suboptimal when you didn't. Now you can break out of that style of gameplay, if you want to that is, and take on a new challenge while still doing some very eye-popping damage numbers. I honestly don't get tired of the TCS playstyle because it just feels so damn good to land that, but knowing another route is out there to take is always a good thing for weapons replayability. Believe me, I'm not going to argue with you at all if you tell me that the main draw for a greatsword is that sweet juicy damage that you get from that TCS, and honestly, I'm absolutely not going to judge you if that's the reason you main it or decide to give it a try. The amount of awesome that you feel after landing a TCS is really almost unmatched by anything in Iceborne. You get to see that thousand some damage pop up, and you get a chance to really tear into a monster with ease. Learning the times when you can really let loose and go for the home run is something that comes with time, but it's definitely a fun process. You also have some tricks up your sleeve to help you adequately get to that final charge and have yourself in the proper position to do so. The Great Swords Tackle gives you a lot of benefits such as positioning, damage mitigation, frames, but it also helps to keep your combo going smooth and uninterrupted. It even speeds things up by letting you skip a level of your TCS combo. Toss in other things like your jumping wide slash to also help you with positioning while doing decent damage and the variability of actually being able to make elemental builds, and you have a recipe for a weapon that's made nice progress with the Iceborne update while staying true to what made it awesome, those sweet, sweet damage numbers.
But that's gonna be it for this one. I never really thought that I would be one to enjoy the Great Sword back in Base World, but I decided to broaden my horizons in Iceborne, and I'm happy I did. That's not to say that I'm some Great Sword savant or that I could rip off a TCS at will, but I'm definitely starting to see that if you take in all the moves and tricks at your disposal, you notice why people love this weapon so much. If you liked the video, please do let me know with a thumbs up. If you're a Great Sword main, Let's do as we have in the previous videos in this series and load up the comments with tips and things I may have forgotten to mention. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Iceborne and other gaming content. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.